Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Maybe this is your first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust. You're blessed with what you hear today. We wanna to begin with prayer. We want to continue to pray for our world and our nation that desperately needs real revival. Uh, we also want to pray for our local community and region. We want to remember Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. And lastly, we want to remember our brothers and sisters around the world. Maybe you have a special and spoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you, Father, for the abundance of all things. We pray for the direction of this nation. We pray, God, for a great door of utterance to be opened up, God, in our world, that we can communicate the greatness and the great promises of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, we also pray for our local region here that you continue uh, to lead us to the hungry and thirsty and opening up a door of utterance here locally. We pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church, Pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven and continue to pour out your divine favor. And lastly, we remember our brothers and sisters around the world. Pray that you furnish them with a hedge of protection. We ask all this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, amen. Well, God bless you. It's good to be here. We played a couple uh, here over the last several days just because of certain circumstances. But it's good to be here this morning, and it's good to uh, be into the Word of God. I want to read a familiar passage, um, and I have, just in these devotionals, I have read from this passage several times. But there's something in here that I want to talk about for a few moments. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 15. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 15. Looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. Now I want to talk about Esau for a few moments, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing he was rejected for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. I know that probably sounds familiar because I think just several weeks ago, I, I used this very scripture when I was talking about failing or falling from the grace of God. But I wanna talk about Esau in particular, and I want to, I wanna entitle this, getting what you want, but losing what you have. Getting what you want, but losing what you have. The Bible says it best right here, Esau for one morsel of meat. Actually, it was, uh, it was pottage, it was beans. Um, he came out of the field, he was hungry. Um, his brother had already in his mind gotten some direction on what to do here. But the fact that Esau was at a place, and I believe that really it's at the nucleus of the bigger, the bigger point that's being made here, is that Esau was at a place where he was willing to negotiate. He was willing to negotiate spiritual things or futuristic things or... Uh, the blessing, the birthright, all of the things that God had for him. Of course, he was the firstborn. You know that the birthright, the inheritance goes to the firstborn, but then the negotiation here, it's saying the blessing that he was willing to negotiate spiritual things over one bowl of beans. And so... From that, I want to take away and say, you can trade your present for your future. You can trade 
sin for righteousness. You can trade carnality for spirituality, any number of things. You can fill in the blanks, fill in your own blanks. But understand that we are not talking about something that is equal here. We are talking about something that in, from the perspective that the word of God is taking here, it is something minuscule, like a bowl of beans and trading it for something that was prophetical, something profound, something powerful, something that was supernaturally and naturally rightfully Esau's. But Esau was in a place, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna explore Esau and how he got to this condition uh, too much, but it's just, it's just being in the posture, being in the position, allowing yourself to come to the place where you're willing to trade the future for the present. I have seen this played out over and over and over as a pastor. And every time, um, in some situations, it's just, it's just heartbreaking to see people that have lived for God, actually getting an understanding, actually getting a grasp, actually getting a handle on truth. Because ladies and gentlemen, truth is not growing on trees all around us. The Bible says that buy the truth and sell it not. When we find it, buy the whole field. When you, when you get a hold of truth, it's worth everything. And I have seen people that get a hold of this and then in a moment of weakness, they make a judgment call that puts in jeopardy future blessing, future anointing, future purpose, future understanding, future revelation. It is a heartbreaking thing to see that. God is gracious, God is good, God forgives, God restores. God brings us back to the place. The story of the prodigal son is one of the most phenomenal stories contained in the word of God. How that um, a son that wasted all on riotous living comes back, comes to his senses. He doesn't come back to the farm and then come to his senses. He comes to his senses. He comes to himself while in that predicament, while experiencing the fruit of his choices. And he said, I made a mistake. I'm going to get back to the place of plenty and blessing my father's house. And he makes the journey. You know the story. The best robe. Shoes on his feet. The ring of authority. The fatted calf. On and on. The embrace. The tears of the father. The celebration with the slain of the fatted calf. That's how God feels. Maybe, maybe you know somebody, or maybe I'm talking to somebody, that in a moment of weakness, your judgment system was not seen correctly. You were not thinking right. You were not feeling right. You just, you were, you were governed by compulsion. You were governed by lust. You were governed by immediacy. You were governed by fear. You were governed by anything. You fill in the blank and you made choices that jeopardized other things. Don't wait another second. Ask God to forgive you, repent, change course, pick yourself back up and recognize that I learned a lesson that I have the potential and the capability of giving up what I have and giving up that which is extremely valuable for something that is absolutely, in comparison, worthless. In Esau's case, the Bible says that he sought for a place, he looked for a place of repentance, was not able to find it, though he sought it carefully with tears. A more accurate rendering would simply say that Esau could not undo, he could not recapture, he could not retrieve that which had already been given up. It involved an irretrievable loss. Learn this about your nature now.
before it gets to the place of walking away from eternity or walking away from great promise and blessing. Anything. Discover that about your nature now and go to war with that because all of us have a carnal nature. And if you're like me, I was raised in the world. I was raised uh, to be very hedonistic, very selfish, very, very self-centered, where I, I, it was very easy for me on a whim to just give up certain things at the expense of other things. The danger is, is that sometimes people give up things never really knowing what life would have been like had they never had those compulsions, those weaknesses, the weaknesses of character, the lack of development, the lack of decision-making, choice-making, the lack of integrity. Deal with that now. Because I've seen far too many people that get what they want, but lose what they have. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.